way too loud. I, I'm an old man today. Uh, episode 84 of Inside the Rapper Studio. Um, today we have Mallory on. It's going to be really exciting for me. There's a lot of history between us two. A uh, few shouts out to Bart and Uh We're going to be talking about his latest single, um, Soft Boy, his upcoming project, Retina. Oh, start of the show just popped up. You can join the live. Just giving a few updates for everybody. Um, hopefully everybody's having a solid win. Uh, I was about to say Wednesday. Thursday. Hopefully everybody's having a solid Thursday. Um, today's been kind of heavy on me, so you have to excuse like the lack of energy that I usually bring for these shows, but I'm kind of like exasperated. <laughs> so, yeah, but we're still going to get this going. We're still going to make this work. Uh, score straight to Saturday. It's all fucking August. Let's get it going. This Saturday, world premiere of Shelf. And speaking of Shelf, I have an interview before the world premiere of Shelf. So hopefully you guys can stay on for that. Um, week after that, I have a special between Inside the Rapper Studio and Working Title Podcast. That's going to be really exciting. And then after that, August 15th, the world premiere of Love, a double feature. So yeah, we're gonna get, go ahead and get this interview started. This one, oh man, it's been a minute. I hope you're excited as much as I am. Because it's been years, legitimate years. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, man. Uh, I don't think anybody's ready for this one. So, what up, what up? episode 84 of Inside the Rapper Studio, of course, I'm your host, Score Sweet. And today, we have a very special guest in the building. I have to give a little backstory for this interview, quite frankly, because I want to make sure I'm connecting dots with you as well as the audience. So, First time I met the guest at the bottom of the screen, it was actually middle school, not high school. It was NAF. If anybody uh-huh. remembers NAL, National NAL, NAL, yes. Yeah, those fucking whiz kids. That, that, that was us. And he played in Francis Scott Key. Of course, that was the hoodlum in Washington. Uh, <laughs> and it was a really, it was a really <laughs> interesting time. We did a bunch of bad shit, like knock over plants and stuff like that. And here we are, it, like, the year after that, we both go to state college, and we became friends for after that, and it's been a minute since I've talked to my guy here, but I'm actually pretty excited to talk to him. So, great artist, great songwriter, great musician, great instrumental, overall, Thank everybody, you. please drop hearts, drop hot lights, drop comments for the only, Mallory. Yes. Yes. Thank you, yay. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. I actually forgot all about NAL. What uh, what team were you on? I was Booker T. I was the bad kid. Booker T, so, yes. Yeah, that did all that horrible shit in the hallway after the yes. game. I'm actually with my best friend right now. She was also in NAL. I'm not going to oh. she's, you know, shy, but, um, yeah, crazy. that's crazy. That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Geek life, good life. I miss NAL. Hmm? How's it going? It's good. I'm in Baltimore right now, just visiting friends and family. You know, it's feeling good. Oh, what's up, Wayne What's up? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I did the wait for him. It's all good. Yes. So, it's good. It's, it's good. I'm just, you know, creating. I um, had a, a creation session with my best friend. And, um, yeah. It's been good. It's been really good. Just trying to stay grateful and creative, and it's all I can really do day by day. That's what's up. I appreciate that answer, man. With every episode of Inside the Rapid Studio, there's an origin story told at the bottom of the screen. So could you tell us all how everything got started for the artist we all know and love as Malou? Who? How did Malou come about? So. Malou, sorry. sorry. Uh, no, 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 it's all good. It's, I feel like I'm going to <laughs> it's um hmm, it's an interesting story uh i've always uh painted and drawn and all that stuff i was always into visual arts and writing and um and depression as a teenager kind of led me to music long story short and then i decided to pursue that in conjunction with my love for my 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 desire to, to do uh, TV and film, and so I auditioned for American Idol and went through the process a bit, and then huh. the last little bit of rounds that I went through were with um, record uh, nineteen records. They uh, 
they auditioned me and the Fox and American Idol people really loved me, but 19 Records thought I was too uh, old school and um, thought I was like for a different thing. And so they rejected me and uh, I took that very, very personally because I was so young and it was my first <laughs> major thing. And I was like, oh no, what? you know, the whole thing. Um, I was on the plane all sentence crying and just sensitive. And then I was like, I, I took a moment and thought about like why um, you know, other people were getting through. It was basically like white boys with guitars getting through. And I'm like, they didn't sound great at all. They sounded crappy actually, but I guess, you know, having an instrument made them more interesting. And so I was like, maybe I should learn an, in an instrument and give myself A, just so that it gets me in a room and people know that I can sing and do other things. And so I did that, but I didn't really expect to find my own sound through the guitar and so that became one thing and i just started creating my own music and just really digging into my sound and one thing led to another i made an ep i, I decided on starting a trilogy that consists of an ep then an album and then another album and i released the ep last year i'm releasing the album very soon, <laughs> very, very soon. Uh, I was gonna get a date out of that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, those who paid attention, very close attention, knows exactly when the date is, but um, I'll be announcing the date soon for that. And then um, I'll be releasing another album next year. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the origin. I and I can appreciate the origin of the words, though, like, especially where that start was essentially, like, the the rejection. The rejection yeah. was, because a lot of the times with artists such as ourselves, we take that rejection and just soak it in and just yeah. make the most passionate music possible. No, what, I was mad. Like, I was I was salty. I was really salty. I, at first, I was, like, devastated um, because, you know, it was kind of, it was yoked for me because the, you know, the idol people, they like gave me special treatment, me and like three other contestants in the whole like season, like this pool of contestants, they like filmed a little bit of work. And like the day I got my golden ticket, they had me, three other people do these special things. And was this whole thing. So I was like, oh, I'm in this like cloud. And then, you know, there was the flip side of the record label people. And it was like, nope. So I was, I was really salty. I was really salty. And I was like, uh, damn, I gotta do something. So I was too sad too long. And from that, you pretty much just went straight nose into the work, which kind of shows straight up resilience. And I really gotta like hand you that because not a lot of people like come back from that. Not a lot of people bounce back from that type of thing. Uh, how does it feel to pretty much be like buried within that, like, I guess, uh, rejection blossom into the flower that we all see? today um i don't know if there's one word to describe it i decided to make a trilogy to kind of paint the picture of 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 the journey the emotional journey that it is ironically um it feels very sad and lonely at first because you, i call it the lone wolf effect where like you feel like you're the only one that's experiencing these experiences and you don't have anyone to talk to because you're in this journey by yourself and you can't really relate with the people around you. So it felt very, very lonely and dark. Um, but thankfully for my best friends, because <laughs> I don't know where I would be, honestly. Um, then it felt very uh, rewarding because, you know, the more that you share and you get feedback from, especially the young people, I have a pretty big young following as well. When I get feedback from them, especially, I, I feel there's something I don't know what it is. I just feel really, really good inside that I'm, I'm basically being what I needed as a young person. Whatever that kind of phenomenon is, I, I'm feeling that, that deeper purpose. Um, but then it's kind of complicated because it's like you're still a human being, and uh, this is work. It's service work, and not only that, my body is a service, so I'm like constantly creating, like using my voice, and it takes a lot of like brain power and uh resources all the while having to survive and like be a regular human being so it's, it's really complicated and there's love and loss and all this stuff but it's it's good it's it's beautiful um that's all i can really describe it as it feels like a garden it feels like 
which is the EPU, and then it also feels like you're flicking through a TV, various experiences. That's all one experience of watching this thing happen um, mm -hmm. and tuning into it. And then the third part would be more so of like dying, coming back again, leaving legacy and kind of like creating this kind of spinning wheel um, for those who come after you and reaching out to those who came before you and all of that. So it's very, it's very, very layered for me. It's, but it, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's very late. Like not a lot of people put that uh, type of like thought process when it comes to their work, especially when it comes to something that they have to like reflect upon themselves on the work. Uh -huh. Like a lot to dig out of that. Most people just go off single, single, single. Here's what yeah. something. Ooh. Like you gotta feel that. Let's talk about it. Oh, yes. go ahead. That's so true. I actually, obviously, I just released Soft Boy, and that's my first single. And I heard a lot of, uh, there's the side of me that has to survive as a creative, and there's the side of me that is the artist, and I protect that above all else, obviously. But, you know, there's this demand for, like, doing what's profitable and being that. And so with that, um, I've been really struggling or had really struggled a lot with um, this idea of like pushing singles and being this and doing this and doing this. And it's like, it's, it's just really hard because I really value bodies of work and I have such a strong integrity about the things that I create. Um, and I know that's not often like the most marketable thing or the most profitable thing, but it's really important because when it hits, it hits deeply. It's not fast food. It's like, it's really good for the soul. It's something that actually nourishes you. It, Kind of, it teaches you how to fish more or less like something that teaches you something that you can leave with and kind of prosper for, prosper from rather than just be sated for the moment um it's been a struggle though especially now with this uh this quarantine is kind of like my cre creativity has been at an all-time high but it's also like uh, if i think too much about the future i, I can like bring myself down because i'm like what am i gonna do da -da 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 -da. but I know I'm talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Man, all right. Let's dig into this album. We can go miles and miles. Yeah. Miles. All right. So the most recent project that you just dropped was called The Garden. I want you to talk talk to us about the process of making a project like this. Uh so the Garden EP was something I started four years ago. Um I just released it last year. And it basically was conceived um, uh, when I had actually had the time to sit down and think about my artistic journey and all of my rejections and love and stuff, my blackness. Um, and the garden as a piece came together after um, Freddie Gray, actually, I believe. Actually, no, it was Mike Brown. That's, that's what incited. That's what it triggered me needing to create a body of work. And I wrote a song called Fire and Rain. And I was like, this needs to be, it, this needs to be a body of some sort. So um, I just wrote song. I wrote, I wrote a bunch of poetry and all that poetry became songs. And um, I just put it together as an EP. A lot of the songs that were there originally are, weren't, didn't make the final and <laughs> vice versa. Uh, and uh, I released it last year. It was actually like the third or second to last draft of it. I actually had like a fully mastered version and like really well produced mm -hmm. version of it. I worked with this producer who like worked with Mariah Carey and all this stuff, but I just, Ooh. I couldn't, I, it lost. It didn't have that like. Uh, it didn't have that like diary, personal, like this is an inside look of this person's brain feeling. It was kind of like, oh, this sounds great. Mm. It, it lacked that like flavor, so I released it last year as it was, and yeah. So we're currently listening to the track "Fire and Rain" back at the studio. Tell us how it is making a song like this and the inspiration behind it, or at least elaborate on it. I was just mad. I remember working. I, I was in. I was living in Baltimore at the time, and I was just mad um, with the uprising. Not 
at, you know, at our folks uprising, but I was mad because I was working for this white ass company during this, 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 uh, this unrest that was happening and hearing, you know, my boss saying, oh, we got to lock the doors because they're going to rob us. And just all this stuff, like, I just felt so angry and I would like speak up at work and I just felt very like angry, but so incredibly sad at the same time. Um, I felt, I still feel to this day that this country, I mean, this country has never really been here for us. And that really saddens me because like, it just, it's just so stupid. I, I hate it. I hate, I just, I just hate it. Um, and so I felt like fire and rain, like I wanted to cry, but I also was like very angry at the same time. And I took that metaphor and apply it to a garden where like, you know, everything that you've worked so hard for, this beautiful thing that has a life of its own is burned down and then ashes come after the rain has fallen and then what is left there is just ashes and debris. Um, but also there's like this, uh, this kind of like black hope that I feel from the situations, of, the situation of our community kind of coming together and fighting for what's right. And that is what, you know, the interlude and stuff afterward is for, but a mix of mix of things just a mix of things and i released another project recently called breaking the silence that uh used uh i re-recorded some vocals for fine rain and brought some other folks um black people from the community and like used their voices to create this composition and it was good my best friend was in it <laughs> shout out to the best friend <laughs> shout out to best friend he said so for the folks that's late school, as always, the song that was most recently playing was Fire and Rain, the song off of the project, The Garden, uh, featuring our wonderful guest, episode 83 of Malawi. Once again, thank you very much for joining me on live, pretty much spilling all your guts for us. Uh, yeah. I want to give a few shouts out to everybody that's in the uh, live right now. Shouts out to Candice. Shouts out to Mark Anthony Marks. We got L Cook. In the building, I'll cook this recent, um, a website for all of her Everybody. content. I see there. Jesus in there. Let's Terry, oh, Mark honey. Anthony, John. Check that out. Oh, it's frozen. It's frozen. All right. Can One second, me? folks. Uh, oh, yeah, it's all. Can you still hear me? Uh, I mean, but I'll talk to the people while it's you know. Can you still hear me? Oh, there you are. You good? You good? Okay, sorry about that. I had a little overheat on my phone, so I had to pretty much make adjustments and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so uh. Malui, we also have to talk about the, I believe it's the record label that's on the uh, project, which is Beyond Our Years. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's something that I created um, through my, through a distributor. Um, I have kind of plans for it like years and years from now. But um, when I first conceived the idea, it's it, so that the, the the acronym for it is B-O-Y, so it's like boy. And so it was kind of, and I'm not thinking like gender specific, but I'm just thinking about like the young folks who need uh, like that, that kind of like nurturing and that platform. And so I'm thinking of like bringing in younger artists or like um, this younger artist as a collective and just kind of building and creating something beautiful and black. But that's, I mean, so far it's just me. <laughs> But I, it was something I, I, I kind of started planting the seeds for like years and years from now. So right now it's just, the name is just there, but it's something that'll kind of come into full fruition, like maybe a decade from now, who knows, but yeah. Gotcha. So I really want to like expand on the idea of forward. So what I what would you say is the ultimate goal outside of music? Because when it comes to like, like record, I don't want to say record labels, but like music groups, it's almost like those outside uh, skills such as you know entrepreneurship, 
such as, you know, uh, building brands and things like that. Do you see anything outside of, like, BOY building stuff like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, this, all the, like, the record labels, the businesses, all that stuff, I'm not, I know that I'm here for such a short period of time. I know my body's going to decompose and I'm going to pass on as I rec as I know myself now. I'm not worried about any of that, actually. What I am, what is my goal is leaving some sort of legacy. And I don't really see that as something tangible, per se. I, I, I want to create a new way of thinking as it pertains to the way we love on each other. Like, I feel like, English as a whole is very limited, but I feel like if I can just create a new wave, like I'm still working on wrapping my head around it, but just a new wave of the way that we see each other and show up for each other. That's, that is my goal. And then once I do that, if it's like a new school of thought that I kind of uh, coin or whatever, I don't know what it would be writing a book that, you know, whatever, um, then I can die peacefully. <laughs> I said, I, I tell my friends all the time, and it kind of sounds dark, but I, I, t I say that the last, not this upcoming album, but the, the album after this, um, could very well be my last thing that I ever released. Like, I want to really, like, lay down, like, this is why I'm here. This is what I, this is a legacy I want to leave. These are the words that I want to speak. And if I pass from this day forward, you know exactly what it is, and this will live on way past me, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm more so concerned about. You know, if I could create a wave, I'm like, I'm good. You know, I don't know how to manifest and I don't know how I'll get there, but yeah. If it's one thing I appreciate about a, our conversation like this, we already like the ahead of time. So we already know how we want the story to end. We know mm -hmm. how to be closed, you know, how, like, the last page should go, essentially. But I feel as though one of those things that really come to mind is a phrase such as, man plans, God laughs. Do you feel as though having that type of um, thing thought of at the time, would it be something to think of when it comes to music being created? Because sometimes your plan can go, like, awry. I missed the, the, the quote you said. What was the quote? Man plans. God laughs. Man plan God God lasts. Laughs. Ha ha ha. Laughs. Oh laughs. Okay. What do I think about that? Yeah, because sometimes as a musician we would have these plans thought out and things like that, whereas though we oh, are yeah. but definitely a damn I can't spoil too much, but I, I say something very similar all throughout like the last album, which it's funny because this this uh, uh, Retina, which is my upcoming album, I'm already I'm already well into the next album, um, but it talks about that a lot. It's about like leaving legacy and how there's one line in one of the songs that says of um, <laughs> of what truly matters and what's truly matter. So of what truly matters would be like the God, as we know, like God the essence, the universe, all of the things that we don't have, like, human consciousness of and attachment to. Um, and then what's truly matter is us questioning, like, physical, like, man, items and money, all that stuff. So I just think that, you know, we're so temporary. Like, <laughs> we're just so temporary. Like, I, like the timeline of existence, we're, we're just, like, a dot that we can barely see on this vast timeline um and whatever we can do to extend our dot you know to make impact to this 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 larger timeline is what we should be doing and that's why i feel like i'm here you know what i'm saying so i mean i i, I think i agree with whatever the quote was like man, man plan plan. and god laughs and in that sense like we can't really plan anything everything a lot of what we're doing is very uh ordained we just don't know it yeah, yeah. i want to move on to the next song uh that i want to play which is indigo because we're twinsies because i have a song called indigo i want to talk about your version of it and how it came about oh <laughs> uh 
how did the song come about? So it's actually really random. Um, I someone was telling the story. It's actually really sad, actually. Um, someone was telling the story about how their lover. So how their lover was killed by the police, right? Oh. And I was like their first love. They were going to get married. They, you know, they were engaged. All of that. Um, and their partner were killed by the police and that was years ago and now I see how radiant this person has gone on with life and you can see all of the joy and beauty and the smiles and how many people are touched uh, by the story and I just thought that was really beautiful this concept of like what's behind the smile you know what I'm saying? Like the story behind a smile. I think that is a very beautiful thing when when someone can see past, you know, what you can uh, uh, accessibly see. You know what I'm saying? That's the end of it. That, that very specific thing in a person that that uh, that draws you to them is their indigo. So I wrote a poem called Indigo and it was talk. It actually, the original poem was, it, I started talking about like uh, math and like tessellations and stuff. And I took like a few of the lines from this larger poem and made it into the song Indigo. Hmm. Yeah. So. I'm not uh, like, whenever I, whenever I get that mention about like how thoughts are when it comes to projects and how things are, like it's never that much like chats going on like that's a lot of words for Louis. Um, <laughs> yeah i wasn't just kind of like compartmentalizing all of these things within like a matter of three minutes in a beat it's hard actually is i mean it's easier now <laughs> but at the time it was really hard because i felt like every single thing was important and i think everything every single thing is important but uh I don't know. I just kind of had to choose. And if Wayne Jay is still in the comments, he helps a lot with that. He's just like, just, it sounds good, bro. Like, just, you know, I'm like, I'm like but like, ah, I, you know, so I, it, it taught me to like, let go to an extent. Um, I think one day I might just publish the original poems of the songs, you know, the, the songs in their poem forms one day. I don't know, but I felt like everything was so important, but I had to learn to like let go and just, you know, put it out there. It makes for good liner notes too, honestly, because like I feel like the death of the booklet, CD booklet, is coming to a like very near. Whereas though we don't get that inside access to these projects, all we really get is just like bad promotional stuff, from, like record label. Whereas though it's not really a story being told in these like six to twelve songs. Right, exactly. I'm big on story. I'm big on creating an environment, and I'm really, really big on telling a story. Um, you'll see that. You'll hear that in Retina. It's very big on, like, creating environment. And, like, flicking through a TV, you're going to be like... <laughs> uh, my best friend heard it. She gives thumbs up to it. <laughs> she watches on... What's that? Lifesaver? Yeah. Lifesavers. <laughs> um, it's really good. I'm just excited. The Garden created, like atmosphere and you know it was kind of like a diary entry more or less and then i would say retina is like if you were what pretend i am a tv and you're tuning into my brain and you're flicking through the channels because people i think most people see people and think of one or maybe two things like people might see me it's like oh he's this happy go lucky or I don't know what people think, honestly. I would try not to think about it or like this type of person, but then they flip through the channel and they see love and they see anger and they see sex and they see loss and they see transcendence and they see like all these things. And um, yeah, that's what Retina is. Pretty much the duality of the artist that makes the music. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a more comprehensive look into my brain. Yeah, personality wise. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I wish my fucking computer did die. I definitely got applause like thing. Like at least yeah, it's all good. I hit applause. Thank man. you, thank you, Malou. <laughs> but to the audience, wonderful interview going on. Huge thank you. I'm really, really, really grateful to have this conversation about music with you. Um, I'm gonna give a few shouts out to everybody that's in the building right now. 
Shout out Billy Bodine. We got Adam Wynn. We got Beth Banger. Stay tuned after the live because Beth Banger and Benjamin Banger are going on live to talk about their latest project, both bangers. That's on streaming right now, but at the live. Uh, who else we got in here? I'm really good at the plug. <laughs> yeah. Solo, Griffin Dork, Indigo Child, all y'all guys. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. So, next thing I wanted to talk to you about is working with Wayne J. Yeah. Yeah, all three of us actually went to uh, City. Um, yeah. I love Wayne. Uh, we actually used to hang out, like, after school. We used to, uh, I used to, like, load up on, like, like my iPod touch when that was a thing, because I'm old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember the whole system of, like, Oh, wait, you're frozen. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, it's all good. My phone was dying. Uh, but, yeah, uh, nonetheless, like, I just remember just having all that energy around you guys. So how was it making music with the person that you've known for so long? Oh, it's easy. It's really, really easy. I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's really easy. I, Soft Boy, for example, was just... And, and the thing, the, the the funny part about it is that y'all don't, people don't know how much music we created. We created so much. I have like a hard drive with a bunch of songs we've created. And we're actually working on a whole different thing. We're working on like an LP. And then he he has like a beat. Like people are not ready, actually. Um, but it's really easy because it all kind of just starts off as jam sessions. Nothing is really structured. He'll just play his guitar or like his uh midi and i'll just sing and the words would just come to me he's really astounded by that and i'm astounded by the melody he's created and we just create like these songs really quick so i just for soft boy for instance i just wrote a poem i made it into a song and i was like i was like bro i got some homework for you just joking i was like bro i got some homework for you and he's like what i was like i was like make a beat with this and i gave him the lyrics and he made a beat and we kind of kept that process and kept going, you know what I'm saying? And so he brought me the beat and I was like, damn, that's dope. And I was like, maybe let's add this. And he was like, all right, cool. Then he took it, he was like, all right, but like, it needs to like hit. It needs to like, we need like, you know, and he added that. And I was like, ooh, let me add some like vocal, like etherealness <laughs> to it. I don't know. And it became the song that y'all hear, y'all hear, so. It's oh, really fun. It's really easy. I also created my other best friend over here. It's really, really easy. So fun. It's just fun. I feel like the one thing I really appreciate about like a song like this is that it's created with two people in mind that actually like know each other and the art that they create from those two uh, perspectives create yeah. a huge piece of work. How is it like? creating with your friend. I mean, Grant said it was easy, but like, how was creating a song like Softboy with your friend? I'm telling you, it's mad easy. Like, <laughs> it's really easy because because we know each other so well, uh, I could just say whatever, and he could just say whatever. Whereas like, if you're working with like, um, I guess like people that you don't know, like strangers or like other producers or whatever the case is, it's kind of like a dancing on eggshells situation. I'm pretty direct, but if he's like, oh no, that, that don't fucking slap, then I'm like, true, you're right. So what do we do? And then he like comes up with an idea. Where I'm like, oh, that sounds like, no, that's no, that that's no, that's whack. And then, or that, that sounds great. When I get in my head, I'm like, oh, but it should be. He's like, he's like, come on, bro. No, that, that sounds great. Cause I'm always in my head a lot. And he's like, he's like a, just put it out there. It sounds amazing. I'm like, okay, I trust you. I trust you, even though I think it sounds like crap. And then on the flip side, he's like, ah, oh, I'm not feeling creative. I'm like, dog, you just created like such and such. You're not seeing like, this is really suggesting that like, it's really easy, this back and forth that happens so naturally. It almost seems like it's the level of reassurance you guys work together, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Because I feel like the bond between a musician and his producer or a singer should be one. Because it's not just making the song, they're making the song too. A lot of people yeah. really want each other out. And where it was, though, it's a. So. Yeah, absolutely. 
how is it outside of like besides you know how is it working with the producer and having that bond with us to trust them with your art and with your um if i'm going to be completely honest producers that i've worked with that i don't know i haven't had the best experiences with and the ones that i do know personally like wayne J. And also, I worked with another producer that I'm really close to, 100 Miles. Uh, they worked on um, track number nine on the upcoming on Retina, and um, that was I, that was a seamless, very seamless process. But for other producers, there's like this ironic trade-off. Like I've had great opportunities to work with the guy who worked for Mariah Carey. That was like not a good because he didn't know he didn't know this bigger picture that I was kind of. Aim that I had in mind, like he didn't he didn't understand the vision that I was kind of aiming for. As much as clear as I can be, there's so you can communicate, but so far, if someone doesn't know you you energetically and like your long term vision. Um, and then I've also had another Wayne J and I. We actually for the garden, we had a great opportunity to work with um, uh, Cardi B's producers, and. Um, and like the the which is why I ended up putting out like the the second or third to last draft my draft of it because their iteration of it was just like it was like it sounded great but it was not at all like the project that I the, the integrity was all lost so I've had I mean on a personal level it's been great like no one has been like assholes or anything like that but in terms of like understanding like the vision and like the sentiment i'm going for the legacy i'm trying to build and the integrity that i want to maintain it's been really difficult um actually uh collaborating with people that i don't know it's just much easier when someone knows like your heart and your spirit and your vision so absolutely man first of all it was really great catching up with you uh Malui, honestly yeah. I have like, people don't realize that, like, when it comes to after graduation, sometimes you don't see people. Like, you do not see people. Yeah, I oh, definitely God. didn't. <laughs> so, like, it feels good to actually, like, catch up with people that you used to know, catch up with old friends, that, you uh -huh. know, that catch up with a fellow artist that does the job, that does the work. So, huge, huge, huge kudos to you. I really appreciate you for even allowing me to interview tonight. Thank you. So, Malou, do you have any last words, any last emotions, propaganda for the people? Yeah. Um, uh, keep streaming and buying <laughs> if you haven't bought it. Soft Boy, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I'm sure Wayne J does as well. Um, the album is coming very, 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 very soon. <laughs> Less than a month. I will say that much. Less than a month, and I will, annou I will announce you know, the date publicly uh, very soon. Um, but if you look at some past stuff, you'll see some Easter eggs here and there of the date. Um, but yeah, just stay tuned for that. And uh, that's all I really have. Thank you so much for sharing your platform and putting people on. And this is what, the 80, I don't know, 84th? 84th. 84th episode of this. So it's, I, I just, I really respect that a lot. And I'm very grateful and appreciative. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't thank me, thank you. Coming up next on Inside the Rapper Studio tomorrow, we have a really great artist. We're going to be talking about his latest project this last year, which was uh, Obsession. We're also talking about a few things with um, Sauce, uh, sorry, it was Sauce Sinatra. Also talking about the style that he used. Also the rivalry between the 410 and the 202. Up next, after this live, we have Beth Benjamin Banger going to their latest project. Hope you guys swing over there and check that out. Everybody. I mean everybody that live, whether it's one second, one minute, or the entire show. Two shouts out to IG for not fucking up, because trust me, I was expecting it. Especially yeah. app, I'm like, here we go. Okay. Okay. But, okay. but thank you. And I do. So from your uh, wonderful host, Score Space, and our wonderful guest of episode 84, Malui. Thank you again so much. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank you guys for the time. And as always, wash your hands, wear a mask. Yes. Thanks. Got my mask right on my arm. That's what we like to see. Appreciate it.
Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you.